Hey guys, welcome back to Fire Iron and Customs. We're gonna do a little something different here this week. Um, I'm making a video in the middle of a video, or I'm making a video while I'm making another video. I uh, think the front suspension video is gonna to be too long um, by the time I get everything done. So I'm breaking it down into two parts, and this part is going to be making the upper bag cups. And I've kind of scrounged around and found as much uh, as I could where I could um, I've got about a foot of four inch pipe uh, it could probably even be five inch pipe but the bolts will fit in here and it will clear the the uh, fitting on the 2600 bags it's definitely the right size if you're doing 2500 bags so I've got that I picked up a little more uh, 3 8 flat plate um, I was trying to figure out how much it would cost to talk to the guy at the steel supply. He said this piece of pipe, um, and honestly, I'm only going to use four inches. So I think he said a foot was, uh, $14. That piece, the whole piece of steel that I bought, and it's going to be for the bag cups and the mounts was around $32 US. Um, and these are current prices as of today. Everybody that's building anything still knows the market is volatile. It's up and it's down. So it could be more or less. Um, so in these cups, I'm going to use six inches by a foot of that, which is less than $10. The pipe cost me nothing. If I had to bought it, it would have been $14. So $25 plus the hardware which was <laughs> an astounding another $20. So, eh. and I found a place online where you can buy them for 50 bucks. So, you know, um, we're gonna make them because we do things custom here. All right, guys, I decided to make these three and three quarter long. It's uh, four inches to the bottom of the lip on that car i do not want any bag up inside the chassis on that car I do not want to have any chance of the bag rubbing the uh inside the chassis of the car so it measures four inches so i did it three and three quarter and by the time you add three sixteenths it's going to be right at four plus the thickness of the plate on the top of the bag so we're going to be good there and I'm sure everybody's seen this trick before where you take and line up a piece of paper around the pipe or using cardboard this one's not quite right and once you get it to line up with itself that is a straight line all the way around so we're going to mark it we're going to cut this out with a uh, with the angle grinder because I do not have um, I do have a chop saw I don't think the chop saw would do um, it does need a blade and I may need a blade so we're gonna cut this with the we're gonna cut this with the angle grinder um, actually I'm gonna put Maggie and Mishka in the house to begin with so we don't get any sparks in their eyes so I'll be right back all right guys I'm gonna go just to the uh, I'm going to go to the inside of the line with my cut. Uh, we don't have a new grind in this, but we might as well use this one up. I got several, new, I mean, I do have new ones. I'm just going to use this one up to begin with. Alright guys, now we're going to take it and clean it up on the old 72 bench, inch bench grinder. I finally decided to use this five and a half inch uh, grinder disc 
or five inch. I have four and a half I usually use, but I had this came with my um, uh, battery powered angle grinder, so we finally found a use for it. start off of the edge and work in whoo that's hot work into it the smell of burning skin y'all and uh, I kind of messed up I got a little bit there too that needs to be cut I actually stepped on the torch it up a little bit there we go. but you know not bad it's got a little bit of undercut right there you got to be careful and make sure a little bit of undercut there you got to make sure you're cutting straight down but uh, we'll take that I'm gonna cut the other one out and we'll come back. All right, guys, I just came in. I know you're not gonna be able to see those scribe marks, but I plotted the center of my circle. Um, this one is a little larger than this one. I'm not, I'm not gonna be concerned over that. But what I did was I found half of the diameter of the circle and I come and scribed the plot. I went a third of a turn, scribed the plot. Went another third of a turn and scribed a plot, and like I said, maybe you can see where, like I said, this one was a little bigger. So I'm just going to put the center right in the center of where those lines meet and on both circles, and that's that's how that's how you find the center of a circle easily. Um, so put those up because I don't need them. We're going to set up our. Um, we're going to set up where our holes need to be for our bag mounts, mark everything, and get them drilled out. Alright guys, they're all drilled out. I ended up picking up a uh, large stepper bit at Harbor Freight, uh, and it did a pretty good job. I could have come in just a little bit. I got my mark off on both of them, but no, no big, I don't think. I think I'm going to be fine. Um, if you were going to dual pattern these you slot these holes so that you could make them fit 2500 bags but if you're planning on running one bag why you know i mean unless you're going to change all right so what needs to be done next is um i need to go over and kind of buff the edges off so get the sharp edges off of them and take and grind some of the zinc plating off of these uh uh, galvanized nuts uh, tube nuts and what we're going to do is we're going to put a tube nut in the center and weld it and the bag will bolt to this and we'll put a piece of, I can't even talk we'll put a piece of threaded rod and I may end up having to buy another piece of threaded rod but they'll have a piece of threaded rod that runs through the top of the coil tower on the car that actually holds the bag, it, it'll go like this. <clears throat> the cup will go like this inside the car and the bag will be below it. The bag goes below it, below the cup like that. And this is what holds the cup inside the coal spring pocket on the car. Actually, let me feel a better angle. Um, like I said, you just have a threaded rod that comes up through the top of the chassis, you bolt it down, and you know, it's good to go. So what I'm going to do is I need to weld, I need to get this centered to the, I need to get the cup centered, centered to the back plate, weld it. Uh, to begin with, I need to weld a tube nut on there, and these are just, uh, like I said, like two nuts for connecting two pieces of threaded rod and um, 
I don't think I'm gonna weld those. I think I'm gonna end up having to have more threaded rod. I could cut down that nub on top of the chassis that the shock goes through. I kind of thought about that, but um, I don't think, I, th I think I'm just gonna leave it for right now. I'll think more about it and we'll get into that whenever we're working on the chassis. So let me uh, knock all the edges off of this and get these ready for welding. All right, I'm just gonna weld these good on three sides. Uh, I've really gotta get me a welding table, guys. But uh, that may be later on sometime this year. So right now, we're just gonna weld on the piece of, new piece of steel. Guys, the ground for the flipping off. Uh, plasma cutter ain't gonna work. That should hold it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and weld it all the way around. You know why? Because I like overkill. because I got big hands and they don't make gloves to fit my hands so kind of bad topic around here sometimes all right so we're going to just eyeball this to where it looks pretty close I mean you can get precise if you want to but we're just going to eyeball it picks on my stomach there so I'm putting doing something I don't hardly ever do. I'm putting on a, an apron. Alright guys there it is. Um, I'm about I could have if it had been 
a 13 inch rod, I'd have been able to have enough to make two. Um, so what, what I've got here is, uh, this is the rubber mount that goes atop of the spring. As you can see, it fits right inside of there. So that's gonna be nice and tight. And it'll come right up through there and line up just like that. And we'll cut it off right there, maybe a little taller than where that mark is because we've got to get another piece of rod and put a bolt and a nut. I didn't get any half inch bolts, I mean half inch nuts, so shame on me. But you get the idea. Um, like I said, these are available. I've seen some for 50, I've seen around 80, 100 bucks. And uh, 110, 120, depending on application, depending on where you buy it from. So, you know, if you have the stuff laying around to make it, you can make it. Um, or maybe it's just as economical to order it, depending on how much that shifting is on those that are 50 bucks. Anyway, um, like and subscribe. If you don't have a Google account, you can go up in the corner, this corner, maybe the other corner, and there's a button that YouTube has up there where you can uh, log in with your Google account and that will let you subscribe and leave comments and likes and those likes and those comments and subscriptions are very important uh, to help the channel grow um, like I said it's I do this more for my amusement but you know maybe uh, somebody else like-minded would see the video and enjoy it so and it and it's free so the scripts subscriptions don't cost anything um, and either do leaving likes and you know comments so y'all have a good uh day and when we come back we're going to be finishing up this front end and hopefully maybe the next video i'm going to do my best if i can get it done before sunday i mean before saturday night you're going to see pictures of it and the volkswagen out in the yard together see y'all later